All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, if you guys seen my last video, I'm still out in that body of water. Um, what I'm gonna do is, I just crushed white bass. If you guys didn't see that video, it'd be at the very end of this video. So when you guys watch this whole thing, stay to the very end of the video and I'll have that one linked. Uh, jerk baits and white bass, I mean, who can, I can't pass that stuff up. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna try and do something that I've been meaning to try for a little bit here. The thing is you gotta wait till the water warms up a little bit. I'm gonna do some drop shotting and slip, slip bobber fishing for some very specific fish. So hopefully if you're seeing that, or if you're seeing this, <laughs> I got some of those fish. Okay, so I'll link it at the end of this video, but I put this drop shot on and did a video on how to, you know, be more efficient with your drop shot fishing. But uh, that's another thing I'll link at the end of this video for you guys. But um, I'm going to do some drop shot fishing basically with these red worms. You can use artificials and stuff like that, but this just seems to work really good. So hopefully this works today because the water temp is 67 degrees. So. Let's go. Okay, so I've lost two whole red worms now because I couldn't tell it if it was a bite or not right away, mainly due to the wind. So uh, I'm going to have to switch it up to my uh, slip bobber for a better bite indicator. That's why I was saying I was probably going to try to do both of these. Um, but either way, I should, it should help me get the fish. This helped me find them. I know where they're at now. All right, same thing, red worm, but uh, now I'm just gonna put it on a little chartreuse, little jig head with a full like, uh, full red worm. So, simple little sickle hook jig head, work great. sure what that is. I think it's a smallmouth. Possible largemouth? <laughs> I think it's a smallie. I figured there had to be something sitting in front of that tree. <laughs> And I used to smallmouth jumping a lot more than this. <laughs> Four pound test. It's crazy. <laughs> Let's 
<laughs> no, you can see it. <laughs> Come here. Nice little smallie on four pound. That's fun. Oh, that's a bluegill. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> Nicely built little bluegill. Any more of those around? I was not expecting there to be a fish next to that pontoon. Apparently there's a school of little bluegills right there. Let's see if there's any bigger ones. <laughs> Seems like they're just these little guys. I thought that bigger one was an indicator. little round female like it wants to be big. Now that I found some bluegills, they eat my red worms like crazy. I'm gonna try some plastics. There's a bigger one. Oh, it's a crappie. <laughs> it's a nice crappie. The BY baits. That's the mega mud bug. Any surprise? Decent female crappie about to spawn. We'll let her go.
Okay, so I'll take a couple of uh, crappie if they're still hanging around. I thought it'd be too late for that. Uh, water temp's already at like 67 degrees, but that female crappie was just chilling underneath that dock, so hopefully I can stick a couple more of those before I gotta go today. All right, you guys, uh, obviously uh, that didn't pan out as good as I wanted it to. I did catch that smallmouth, which was kind of fun, um, but I will tell you the truth. I was looking for bluegills and big ones, so <laughs> I'm a little discouraged. I did get a bunch of those little guys, um, but the fun fact is, is whenever you're on a big bluegill body of water, um, usually there's a lot less population, so it's a lot harder to find them. So like that little school of bluegills I found, I was very excited because that could mean there's bigger ones nearby or there's just a little school of bluegills. <laughs> um, I did see a lot of carp rolling today. I'm pretty sure they're spawning. So that might not help the situation. And then any bluegill beds I did see today were all empty. So either people have kept them all, which you should never do, because <laughs> that's basically how you destroy a lake is keeping them off the beds. Um, or two, the water got too cold last night because of the cold front and the bluegills pushed off the beds. So sometimes they'll make beds and then they'll push off of them if the water gets too cold and then they'll come back when it warms back up. So. I might come back out here when it warms up, but not likely because right now it seems like everybody and their mother's fishing out here, and I'm not trying to destroy this lake. So <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this struggle. Obviously, if you're not new here, you know what's up. But if you are new, can you please just remember to?